I'll change the look of those particles, and they're okay. You know, I'd like a longer trail and a bit bigger and sparklier. So I'm going to go back into it. Simplest way is go to the thing and right click and choose Edit. As you can get back into the particle editor. And I'm going to adjust the properties of the particle. I'm going to do that all over here in this part of the display. So obviously you've got your presets, you've got your left, right, up and down and everything else. And then you've got the properties of the particle. So you've got the emitter. In other words, the thing that's throwing out all the particles and some properties of that. You've then got properties of the individual particles. And then you've got stuff where you can really play around to your heart's content. Now again, I could spend ages and ages over this. I'll try and keep it simple. For a start, you've got what kind of emitter it is. A point or a line or a rectangle. But as you change it, I'm getting a different kind of pattern popping up. I'm going to leave it back at a point. I've got a thing up here to control the colour, so if I click on that, I can change the colour of my particles completely. Now it's gone blue or green. I actually quite like blue. Let's go blue. Down here, let's hide the preview window for a second so I can see some of these other parameters. And you've got the life, how long the particles last. And you notice the longer they live, the bigger my trail's getting. Because I'm getting a particle created and it's living a bit longer. You can change the number of particles. You can see that's having an effect on the length of it because there's less of them, so they fill it out a bit less. How fast or slow they're going. Put a bit of randomness in them, put a bit of rotation in them. Sometimes a bit of gravity, scale. Woohoo, I'm making it a lot bigger now. And how transparent they are. You can adjust it further using these other two tabs. So on the second tab here, you can do things like control the color of the particles. This sometimes doesn't have an effect, like in this case. I have chosen to make everything a bit blue and I've set the slider here to be 100% so this is completely wiping out whatever colors generated here so this part of it's not relevant in this case. I can change a few different things here. I can line particles to path and it depends on the particles whether that has an effect. But the major thing I can do here is click on this little box and I can change the type of particle that's being generated. So here I'm basically making a lot of very, very small white fuzzy blobs. I can make flashes or choose any of these and that will immediately change the look of the particles. So having a look at that, you can see there I've got more of a sort of sparkly effect on the particles as they're coming out. This particular preset is made up of three lots of particles. So looking at the timeline down here, you can see I've got three particle streams and if I turn off the eye you can see that the top one is this sparkly thing that I've just chosen. The second one down is a sort of glow so click on that and I can change that to something else. And the third one is the major part of it which is that major blobbiness that I've got there and click on that and I can change that to something else as well. So when you're starting to fiddle with some of these parameters you know, you've dragged in a preset and you're fiddling around and things aren't making any difference it could be simply that you're trying to fiddle with, say, these particles and not these particles. In this particular effect, the bottom one there is the one that's got the most stuff on it. So if I click on the top one and I come in and I start to fiddle with some of these various parameters, and I click on that and then choose a different type of effect, you're hardly seeing any difference because the majority of this is all down to these particles at the bottom. Knowing that I want to change that, I've got those particles at the bottom. I'm going to click on that and change it to, I don't know, that kind of effect. What's that look like? Mm, interesting. I'm then going to come on to the last tab up here and start fiddling a bit more. And I'm going to add longer life to those. And giving them a longer life means I get a longer trail. They last longer as you fly across the screen. I can add more of them. I can change the size of them. Yeah, obviously the X size and the Y size. Okay, that's reasonable. I can change the speed of them. If I up the speed a bit, because they're getting so crazy, they're going all over the shop. I can change the randomness, so instead of following the path, they're going a little bit more random. I can rotate them a bit. I can add a bit of gravity. So a bit of negative gravity, they all fly up in the air. Sort of pulling all the particles up in the air. A bit of positive gravity, they go downwards. No gravity at all, they just do that. Top half is just the general sort of life of the particles. Then I come down here and I can you know, add a bit of variation to them. So I'm saying across the life of the particle, just, just vary it a bit, make it a bit more random, which means you get a different kind of result. And then finally, over life, you can say, right, over their life, this is actually, as you can see here, this is the bit that's keyframed. They've been keyframed to get a bit smaller of their life. So you can see there, one value there and another value there. 
Now I've got something that's a lot more glowy, a lot more sparkly, and an awful lot bigger. Click on OK, and I think what I'm going to do is just trim that down so it's in the middle. So there we are, in comes my glowy, sparkly caterpillar. Actually, I quite like it to fade out at the end. Rather than going back into it, I'm just going to open up this layer, turn on keyframing for transparency, and then just fade it out at the end. There we are, a bunch of particles. Only other question you might say is, why on earth are those particles going behind the words? It's just the way the 3D particle works, it's kind of mixing itself together with the words. If I want this to be in a separate layer, which is above the words, I've just got to right click on it and say, render as new layer. I know they appear as a separate track here, but actually they're kind of part of this layer. By right clicking and saying render as new layer, they're on their own layer, which means they're on top of everything else if that's what you want. Let's get out of this. Save as animation, yeah. Back into Edius and yay, I now have title with a sparkly effect. So hopefully that's covered quite a few of the basics of this title. This title themselves make quite a lot of tutorials which you can see on YouTube and you can download from free from their website. And they are very good. Nobody speaks in them, it's all reading captions on screen, but they do cover just about everything, so they're definitely worth a look at. That's how I started when I was learning this title. And I'll also produce a few more which are stuck up on the website in the fullness of time. So I hope you found that basic introduction useful. Come back to the website again another time for some more tutorials.